In Cornwall, uh, we have a great sense of the uh, past and the present. And one only has to stand on nearby Tregoning Hill and witness this. Um, the hill was once the home of the Bronze Age people some 3,000 years ago. And it was there in 1746 that William Cookworthy, a Plymouth chemist, discovered China clay. Now, I mean, he was in search of China clay to perfect a hard paste porcelain. And he came down from Plymouth on horseback, incidentally, to visit his friend down in Godolphin Cross, uh, who was the mine captain at the nearby mine, Great Work. Some of you might have heard of the mine belonging to the Godolphin family, a, a terrific mine, great wealth there. And uh, it was there we saw men working with this china clay, repairing the furnaces, and he got very excited about all this and took samples with him back to Plymouth, cut a long story short, and perfected a hard paste porcelain. Now, when you're on the hill and you're looking south, you'll see uh, the three main modern New World uh, things. And one is the Kildrow's Naval Air Station, which you'll see from there, the aerial dishes at uh, Gunilly, and away to the left of these, the wind farm at Benitham. Now, some Cornish men by birth are known for a number of firsts when it comes to discoveries and inventions. One can recall Richard Dravidic, known as the father of the locomotive engine, Humphrey Davy, inventor of the miner's safety lamp, and nearer home um, we have Henry Trun Grouse, born in Helston and uh, the inventor of the life-saving apparatus which evolved into the breeches boy which has saved countless lives around the world. But here on the Lizard Peninsula there is so much to recall. The industries that once flourished here, fishing, mining, farming, quarrying, giving employment to countless hundreds of people. And at nearby Mullion and uh, Kedgeworth, fishing gave employment to a, a large number of the inhabitants. Copper mining was carried on just north of Perdanic here, and a mass of native copper, pure copper from the ground, was sent there, weighing 1,500 hundredweights from uh, uh, Perdanic to the Great Exhibition in 1851, uh, in London. So just imagine that gleaming piece, 15 hundredweights being sent to the Great Exhibition. And nearby, at Gew Craze, um, soap rock, some people call it soapy rock, soapy cove we hear about, uh, soap rock was quarried there by a contemporary of Josiah Wedgwood, the potter as you know, and um, excellent specimens of china clay were produced from this soap rock, which was exported from Hale to Liverpool to their factory there. And here too, we mustn't forget the granite industry, which has provided employment for, for quarrymen for centuries. Uh, the vast quarries at Dean, Prothaustock, and Constantine, and others on the peninsula have uh, produced untold quantities of materials for both uh, domestic and road building purposes. The mineralogist, uh, the Reverend William Gregor discovered a, a black powder in a stream in Manacan in 1791, uh, which was first called Manacanite, because he found it there at Manacan, or Gregorite after him. And this led to the powder being experimented with, and uh, titanium was the result. Titanium is used, as you probably know, you're some of you are scientists, in the building of high-speed aircraft and spacecraft. Now, described as the jewel in the, the lizard's crown is its central core, the deposits of the colored stone known to us as serpentine. Stone was exported from the lizard to Wary Town in Penzance. A lot of people think that the industry really started here in the lizard, but it didn't. It, went, it was exported to Wary Town where there was a factory set up to cut and polish the stone. And this gave employment to a number of people. And then later on, we had our own factory here on the Lizard, the Poltesco factory. A stroke of luck came when the royal family were enjoying a holiday cruise off the Cornish coast. And Prince Albert, reputedly feeling seasick, was asked to be landed or put ashore at the Lizard. And uh, his boatmen landed him in Kynance Cove. 
and uh, there he met a local man who had obviously been messing around with serpentine and making a few ornaments, introduced him to a serpentine. And Prince Albert was so impressed that he requested a visit to Wearytown along with the Queen and the royal children to see the work that was being carried on there. And um, royal patronage was sealed by an order of mantelpieces, pedestals uh, for Osborne House, their retreat there, uh, which was built, being built on the Isle of Wight. Another coup for the peninsula was when Marconi chose uh, Paul Dew to carry out his wireless experiments. He erected an aerial 164 feet high. I don't expect they complained about the heights of things in those days. And, and on the 11th of December 1901 at 6 p.m. GMT, he transmitted a signal through to St. John in Newfoundland. That's the famous aerials there at Paul Dew. The famous three dots of the letter S in Morse code were sent at five minute intervals, faint but clear. The signals were detected almost immediately on the other side of the Atlantic. And what a thrill that must have been for those involved in the project. <clears throat> the First World War saw Benython chosen as uh, an airship station. And the station was first known as Lizard Airship Station and covered 320 acres, a vast acreage. And in June 1916, the station was commissioned and renamed Royal Naval Air Station Mullion. Airship C-9 took its first flight on the 18th of June 1916. Now these airships of Benighton could ascend to uh, great heights and flew up and down the channel uh, protecting our convoys using the channel and spotting German submarines. The Nithen was used again in the Second World War as an outpost to Berdanic airfield. Trials were carried out of Benighton using kites to take the place of the large barrage balloons that used to be flying around over town. And incidentally, this village hall, as you've probably been reading from your program, uh, was once the YMCA hut used by the servicemen station at Benython and brought to the village 90 years ago. And what's new about recycling? It's fantastic, isn't it? The thing is still here. And most of us will know uh, that our Second World War uh, airfields are situated over on the north coast <laughs> of Cornwall. And Prodanic was built primarily uh, for pilots experiencing difficulty over the channels. They could land here instead of having to make their way across the, uh, co uh, the Cornwall to the north coast. After the war, uh, Barnes Wallace, famous for inventing the bouncing bomb, came down to Prodanic to experiment with a swing wing aircraft called the Swallow. Now a long ramp was built, constructed with rails, and was used to launch the radio control scale models, proving the concept of a swing wing airplane. He was assisted there by group captain uh, Leonard Cheshire, who incidentally had his own uh, aircraft, a Spitfire. Just imagine taking your Spitfire and flying down to Cornwall. Fantastic days. And uh, we all probably know that Cheshire set up his first um, Cheshire Hospital at Prodanic by converting some of the huts there, and he was ably assisted by personnel from nearby RNAS Kildrose. The Royal Naval Air Station at Kildrose was opened in 1947 and has become, as we all know, the world leader in the field of search and rescue and uh, combat training with helicopters. Nearby, at Gunilly, uh, a site was chosen by the General Post Office for its first experimental satellite communication ground station. And on July the 11th, 1962, the first intercontinental picture between the United States and America and Great Britain was flashed across the Atlantic by the satellite Telstar. There were some older people I've met a lot of old people in the museum during my time there. Always refer to the station still as out at Telstar. And Arthur, the first aerial 
has now become a monument in that it's recently been listed. Three essential conditions uh, were found here. A low horizon, a firm rock foundation to gain the serpentine, and freedom from the industrial interference. Now on the 14th of July, the first telephone call using public network by way of Telstar was made, and followed on Monday, a great occasion when BBC television sent the first coloured pictures from uh, there across the Atlantic to the United States of America. So we can see for a great number of years the Lizard Peninsula has been in the spotlight and all the industries and uh, communicating systems have provided employment on a vast scale. So much so that villages and towns about, around about here have grown in size over the years. And as we have seen, there have been a number of firsts here. The people of the lizard are familiar with using its location and natural resources to the full. And I understand, and I don't know a lot about this, but soon 100%, 100% of the lizard's domestic electricity demand will come from green power in the wind. And so we are leading the way yet again with another first.